Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, first week of January, and uh, I have to go back to work next week. Damn it, my month-long vacation's over. But that's okay. I enjoy getting back to work, getting back to school, and getting back to the students. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A couple of you guys have asked me in the past, why don't I record some of my lectures? Well, because the school won't allow it. When I first asked them if I could, they said, we pay you money, and these students pay money so that we can make money. Not that the students can learn, but so that they can make money. Basically, why would they want to give it away for free? I said, what if I do it on my own time? They said, oh, you give away our material, we'll fire you. So that's why I don't record my lectures. But somebody has asked me, well, a couple of you guys have asked me, for a sample <clears throat> of what goes on in basic electrical engineering class for freshmen. So this is going to be a brief cut down version of lesson three principles of electrical engineering 221 for freshmen and what we're going to talk about is um, basically current divider circuits so there are three things that you need to know starting today and these are what are covered in lessons one and two uh, the first one is of course ohm's law there's our Ohm's law triangle V equals I over R or I times R that's that's the building block that is the keystone to electrical engineering if you don't grasp that you're not going to make it through the class all right next is KVL Kirchhoff's voltage law which says quite simply the sum of all voltages in a loop must equal zero. All right. And the third and final thing is KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, which says the sum of currents going into a node must equal the sum of currents coming out of the node. Those three principles are the keys to electrical engineering. If you grasp them, if you understand that, you can understand everything else going further. But if you don't, if you have trouble with that, you're going to have trouble in the class. So let's start with a, a very simple circuit, okay? Imagine, if you will, that I'm standing at the blackboard and drawing this lovely drawing for you. So this is our circuit. We have a six volt power source we have three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, and their values are 1K, 2K, or I'm sorry, 1K, yeah, I'll we'll make it 3K, and 2K. Now, we know that all the voltages across all the components in a parallel circuit are the same. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. So knowing that, we can draw a little box here. So if we draw a box here and we label it R1, R2, R3, and total, yeah, I never could draw straight lines, so you're just going to have to bear with me on this, okay? And then we have E, I, and R, you can make that a V if you're so inclined. And okay, so we started with uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, almost equals zero. So we know that we have six volts going through every part of the circuit. 
simple, easy peasy, right? Now we also know our resistances, 1K, 3K, and 2K. So we can use Ohm's law to calculate our currents going through each part of this. Six milliamp, two milliamps, and three milliamps. But what we don't know are our totals. Now we can add this up here and get our total milliamps because Kirchhoff's current law. 11 milliamps. Pretty simple so far, right? Are you following me? So it, it should be apparent to you that the current through each resistor is related to the resistance. But the voltages are all the same. So it is not a directly proportional algebraic sum. It is an inversely proportional. For example, the current through R1 is twice as much as the current through R3 because R1 has twice the resistance. If we were to change our voltage across the circuit, say to 24 volts, that would make this, what, 24 milliamps, 8 milliamps, and 12 milliamps, giving us a total of 44 milliamps. But our proportions would remain the same. The current through R1 is still exactly twice that of R3, despite the fact that the source voltage has changed. The proportionality between the different branch currents is strictly a function of the resistance. Also, the reminiscent voltage dividers is a fact that the branch currents are a fixed proportion to the total current. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions so far? So despite changing our voltage fourfold, the ratio between the branch current and the total current remains exactly the same. Nothing has changed. And for this reason, a parallel circuit is often called a current divider for its ability to divide the current. And with a little bit of algebra, we can work out a formula for determining our parallel resistor current. Okay, so we know that the current through any resistor is En divided by Rn. And we know that our voltage in a parallel circuit equals voltage E N equals I total times R total. So the current through any parallel resistor, oh, I think I broke my pencil. Happens with the chalk all the time. IN is equal to I total times R total over RN. And if we break that down completely, we find that IN equals I total times R total over Rn. The ratio of the total resistance to the individual resistance is the same ratio as individual current to branch current. This is the current divider formula, and it's a shortcut for determining branch currents in a parallel circuit. So if we use our original circuit to recalculate all of this out, we are going to find out how all the proportions work together. So if we say current at R1 equals 11 milliamps, 545.45 ohms over 1K ohm, that's 6 milliamps, and the current a resistor 2 is 11 milliamps or 545.45 ohms over 3k equals 2 milliamps then the current at R3 
Also 11 milliamps is again 545.45 ohms over 2K equals 3 milliamps. See how all the proportions work out exactly the same? So if we come and we bring it all back together, we can finally fill out our box here and you see that it is 545.45. And that is the current divider formula. That is how you solve for parallel circuits. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Do your homework. Peace.